So it looks like that one of the most viewed videos on my channel is the drag and drop system in Unity where I showed you how to create a simple puzzle game for PC or Android. With that in mind and Danny's love and passion for milk, I will do you all a favor and milk that cow for today's video. You may have heard about Slimeland Evolution, my current game that I'm developing with almost 10 devlogs on my channel, but who counts, right? A lot of you keep telling me how they appreciate the mechanic of dragging the slimes around and moving them on the island. The slimy squeeze effect also helps in making this function even better and much more appealing. At the end of this video you will be able to implement such a powerful mechanic in your mobile or PC game as well. I am Savu and let's dive into it. We will focus only on one slime, his name is Blobby by the way and right now we can't interact with him at all. He only has one script attached that allows him to move randomly around but that doesn't bother us at all. We simply create a new script and name it drag around. In here we will use two float variables that will have values based on the starting position x and y of our drag movement. We are also going to use a boolean that will indicate if the slime is moving or not. Now in the update function we want to always check if the slime is moving. If so, we are going to need the mouse position and store it in the new vector3 variable. It will be equal to input.mouseposition. This is basically the mouse position on the screen in pixels. But we are not satisfied with pixels, so we are going to convert them to unity units using camera.main.screen to world point with the mouse position as the parameter. With that done, we now need to have our slime to follow our mouse around. Oh, and if I didn't mention it, this script will be attached to every slime that's active on the scene and that's why we are using transform.localPosition. The new position is based on the new vector3 with x input the mouse position.x minus the start position.x. For the y input it's the same but with the y parameters. And finally, for the Z input, we are just using the current local position.z since no movement happens on this axis. This will allow our slime to smoothly follow our mouse position throughout the screen. So far so good. Now how are we going to detect if we are holding the mouse button to hold the slime or if we are releasing it? Simple, Unity has built in functions that provide us with exact that information. First we are going to use the on mouse button down function that is called every time we click on the slime for the first time. To detect the left mouse click we also need to check if input.getMouseButtonDown 0 and in the if statement we are creating a new vector3 with the mouse position exactly like in the update function. Copy and paste it from above if you are too lazy to write it again. And now that I mention it. All scripts and source codes from every video on my channel are available for you to download. All you need to do is to be part of our Patreon community by supporting me and the channel with a tiny monthly amount. I really put a lot of thought into this and finally launched my Patreon. I'll not just tell you hey come and support me on Patreon, no. I did this because game development and all the community around it means a lot to me. Therefore, I have provided tutorials, games and videos for free. It's also very important to me to help you all out with development problems you may face and I put a lot of effort into answering all of your questions in the comments or on Discord. Please understand that I am a solo developer and everything you see on my channel and games is made only by me. It's very stressful and time consuming, especially when working part time jobs and dealing with university stuff. And that's why I launched Patreon. Just with 2 euros per month you support me more than watching about 1000 ads, isn't that crazy? At this price you also have the El Patron Discord role that gives you access to the Patreon only Discord channel. There I will be available to give you the right advice and help you out on your game dev journey. A win win for all. Enough with that, I have to thank every one of you for the support and for watching my videos, you are awesome. Back in Unity where we need to give a value to our starting position variables. This values will be the mouse position minus the local position x and y of the slime. Last thing here and since we are now clicking on the slime, we set the moving variable to true. Doing that will enable everything that's inside of the update function above. 
At this point, we only need to check when we release the mouse button, and again, we are using a Unity function named on mouse up. Easy as that, and in there, our moving boolean is set to false again. Nothing more. Get rid of the start function, and we are done. Assign the script we created to any object you want to move around, and also create for it a new box collider 2D component. Why a collider, you ask? Well, by enabling is trigger, this collider can now detect our touch with the on mouse button down and up function we used in the script. Let me quickly change the dimensions of the collider and test it out. It's working. We can now click on the slime and by holding down the left mouse button or finger in case you play on mobile, we are able to move it around. The movement is also very smooth and has no snapping to the mouse position. I like it. Let's move on to the juicy part of the video, where we are going to add a squeezy effect to the slime whenever we are clicking on it. For that, assign a new animation component and choose the animation you want to play. I have already one created, but if you don't, watch this video to learn how. In my case, I only change the scale values and create the illusion of a squeezy effect. Really nice, right? Don't you want to touch Blobby right now? I knew it. In order to call the animation at the right time, all we have to do is to open up the drag around script and add a line of code in the on mouse button down function. Inside the if statement, get the animation component and use the play function to start the animation. Make also sure to set your animation to not loop since we want it to be played only once. This easy effect makes a huge difference in the gameplay and when used correctly you can build a whole game around it. Just like in Slimeland Evolution, our main game characters are slimes, so having a squeeze effect like this when touching them is not only great, but very important as well. Like the video if you got so far, and if you haven't subscribed yet, what the fuck? Smash the subscribe button, have a look at my Patreon page, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, ciao!